Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to build a little tool to convert the SQL that Access generates in the query editor directly into VBA code that we can use in the VBA editor without having to do a lot of extra work, adding quotes and line breaks and line continuation characters and all that stuff. We're going to do it with one click. Today's question comes from John from Hancock, New Hampshire, one of my silver members. He's also a five-year Learning Connection member. John asked me, is there a way to format the SQL text of a query with the proper line breaks and quotes so I can copy it to my VBA editor for a run SQL command without doing all that manual editing? Yes, John, that can be a time-consuming and cumbersome task if you have a query built and one of the things I teach in my developer classes is that I don't like having tons and tons of small queries in my database. Yeah, big complicated ones you want to save. But if it's something small and relatively simple, I don't like making an extra query for it because it just makes your database cluttered with junk. So what I teach in my developer classes, like John knows, is we'll take those queries and we'll put them directly in our VBA code using a run SQL command. But you have to take that SQL that the query designer puts together for you, copy it over to VBA, then you got to put quotes around everything and separate out the variables and put line continuation characters on it if it's long, and that can take a few minutes. So there is no way to automatically do this in Access. However, with a little bit of work, we can set up our own little editor where we can copy and paste in the SQL that Access gives us and then convert it over to something that will work very easily in VBA. So with a couple of copy and pastes, your job is done. Let me show you what I put together. We're going to start off with my blank customer template. You can download a free copy of this from my website. I'll put a link down below in the description. Go grab it. This is the basic simple customer and contact database. We've got a customer list. We've got a customer form. Right? Simple information. Customers with contacts if you want to see contacts. Now, I don't have any queries in this basic template, so let's create a couple. Let's go to Query Design. Let's make a customer query. Now let's start with something simple. Let's just bring in the star and we'll save this as my customer queue, my simple customer query. Now where do I find the SQL that Access generates? We'll go up to View and SQL View and that's what you got there. All right, let me copy that. Now I'm going to drop that in Notepad for just a second. There's a sample Notepad. I'm going to move this off the side of the screen. All right, just move it over here. We'll hang on to that for just a minute. All right, we can close this. Now where would I use that, you might be asking? Well, I've got my customer list here. Let's say I want to add another button so I can filter the results up here based on whatever is in that query. Okay. So let's design view real quick. And I will just copy and paste this guy. All right. And let's put in here filter. All right. Now the query could be anything. This is just a simple example. All right. But I want to change what records show up here by changing the record source, right? The record source property, which right now is just customer T, but I can come in here, right click, build event. Well, I don't want a macro. This has got a macro in it. So let's get rid of that macro first. Uh, actually, let's give it a name, filter button, right? I like to give all my buttons a good name. Thank you, Alex, for teaching me that. Uh, for years, I just left them as command nine, but Alex kept on me. He's like, you got to change those. It's bad code. And he's right. Let's get rid of the event. There's an embedded macro in there. We're just going to delete that. Goodbye. Then I'm going to hit the dot, dot, dot button in here. If you get asked, pick Code Builder. You want to go into the Code Builder. And right in here is what's going to happen when you click that button. I'm going to say me.recordsource equals. Now, I could go Customer Queue. All right? I could set it equal to Customer Queue and make a saved query. But what happens if I got a bunch of different filters I want to apply? And I want to save those. I don't want to have to have 15 different queries in here for all this. So that's where this comes into play. I want to put this SQL statement right in here, then I don't need this query anymore. See how this works? And I got a bunch of different stuff in here. Okay. Now, to put that SQL statement in here requires this. I have to copy this, all right, paste it here, but it doesn't come in very handy. All right. It, it Access makes the queries in multiple lines. Yeah, that's fine. That's nice. All right. But now I got to get rid of this. I got to get rid of that line break. Put a quote on the end here. And this is an extremely simple query. Sometimes you get ones that are multiple lines long. You got all kinds of other stuff, where conditions, order by statements. And it's just, it's a, it's, it takes a while to format this to get it nice and to fit in here. So what I'd like is a tool 
where I can just say, take this query text and convert it to what I need right here. All right. You can also do this with do, do command run SQL statements for things like update queries and, uh, and append queries and things like that. All right. But now if I come back into here, it's the same set of data. All right. And then I go filter. What happens if you want to say, um, let's say, select customer star from customer T, right? Um, order by last name. All right. Sort of my last name, for example. And then go. Let's see how it sorts them. Okay, that's why you might want to have different filter buttons in here. And I cover all this in my full classes. But the point of this class is to say, how can we turn this quickly and easily into that? All right. Let's go back to the main menu, design view. Now, I've already got a status box here. If you haven't watched the video where I build this customer template, go watch it. It's called the blank customer template. There's a link to it down below where you grab this file from. Watch the video. It explains what this is. This is basically just a button that, that puts some stuff in a status box. And that's why I don't have to message box things. It just makes it easier to get statuses and put stuff in there. All right, so we're going to utilize that. All right, let's move the hello, hello world button up top. In fact, I'm going to get rid of these buttons here. We don't need them. Let's put hello world over here, and we're going to call this guy convert. All right, now I'm going to take this and make it nice and big so we can see all the SQL in there. I don't think we need the main menu for now. Let's get rid of that too. We're not getting rid of my advertising logo. That stays on the screen. <laughs> all right, so this guy's called status box. Let's make a copy of this, and this is where we're going to paste our stuff into. So copy, paste. All right, we're going we're gonna to paste our SQL into this top box. Let's call this guy uh, SQL text. All right, SQL text. All right, and let's just change the color a little bit. Let's make him yellow so we know the difference here. Okay, so we're going to grab this, copy and paste it into here, and then hit the button, convert. Stick the button right there. And then it'll turn into this. All right, and we'll format it properly. How do we do that? Well, with some string manipulation. All right, let's close this, save changes. Yes, open it back up again so we got a fresh start. Now I'm going to copy this stuff here from my clipboard, right? Copy, paste. All right. Now, in order to do this, you have to understand the concept of the VB new line. Okay, it's actually a combination of two characters. It's a carriage return and a line feed. It goes back to the old days with a, a typewriter, right? It would get to the end. You do a carriage return and a line feed. All right, line feed basically is you go to the next line, and then a carriage, you know, feed feed the paper up, right? And then a carriage return sends the head, whoops, sends the head back to the beginning. So it's it's new line and then carriage return, or, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. And that can be represented in access with a constant called VB new line. All right, it's actually a CHR 13 and a CHR 10. We don't have to worry about that right now. All we need to know is VB new line. That says go to a new line, okay? So what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is replace this string, and everywhere we find a VB new line right here, all right, we're going to replace that with a close quote, an ampersand, and an underscore character, because in our, in here, okay, we don't want to make this string super long, all right, and this looked like this initially, so I'm going to make this two lines. If Access made it two lines, I'm going to make it two lines, all right, so select customer star, like this, it's going to go, we're going to put, the VB new line was initially there. All right, like that. So we're going to put close quote, ampersand, underscore, that's the VB uh, line continuation, right? Tab, tab in here. And then the next line, we're going to have to put an open quote like that. And then when we're done with the whole thing, we'll put a quote at the beginning and a quote at the end. And we'll get this. All right, we'll get this string right here. All right, how do we do that? Well, we do it with a simple replace function. If you've never used the replace function, I've got lessons on that. I'll put links down below in the description. Okay, so in our button, we're going to get rid of this. We don't need that. Let's dim s as a string, temporary variable to, help, to hold on to what we're working on. All right, let's start off with s equals SQL text. Let's grab the text from the text box and put it in s. I don't like working with stuff directly in text boxes. I like to take it and put it in the memory variables. It just It's cleaner. For some reason, it works better. I've had problems. Now, here comes the replace. s equals replace What's the string we're replacing stuff in? S. What's the find string? I'm looking for a VB new line. All right. Access nodes, that's a CHR 10 and 13. Okay. So what am I going to replace it with? Well, we're going to start off with, inside of quotes, start off with, replace that with a close quote. All right. And underscore. And then a close quote for that. And we need that VB new line there. 
and let's throw a VB tab in there too. VB tab, so it tabs in. That's another character that you need to learn. All right, that's just a tab character. And now we got to close the quotes. Actually, this will be the open quote on the next line. All right, so it's going to be quote, 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 quote. Close parentheses. All right, enter, and I missed something in here. What I miss? I got one too many right here. There. All right, this double, double quote becomes a single double quote when it converts over to a text string. If that's confusing for you, I have a whole video on it. It's confu it was confusing for me at, at the first two. Okay, it's called the double double quote problem and I'll put a link to that video down in the links down below. All right, now when we're all done doing that, let's status S. Let's put that basically puts S in the next text box. Let's see what we get. All right, save it. Come back over here and hit convert. Boom. And I still got hello world. Why do I still have hello world? <laughs> Aha. I have hello world because I put this code in the wrong place. Rookie mistake. But I'm not going back and redoing the video because you know why? You'll make this mistake eventually too. All right. I put this code in the wrong spot. I replaced that filter button click. And you can tell right up here, customer list F. All right. I've done this before. I guarantee you'll do it. Okay. So what we have to do is we're going to copy this stuff here. Yeah. The filter button text is gone. We'll have to redo that later if we want to. Come back over here. Or you can use your Project Explorer if you want to open up the Project Explorer. I'm not going to go that deep. Right-click, Design View, right-click, Build Event. All right, now I'm right inside the Hello World button click. I'm going to get rid of all this other code. We don't need it. The Command 10, this stuff here. Let's get rid of all that so it's cleaner. All we need is the status function up top, or sub. All right, let's paste that code that we just stole right there. Okay, that's the stuff we just wrote. Save it. Say yes. Close this guy. Close that guy. Let's open it back up again. All right, let's see if it works. Go. Oh, invalid use of null. What happened? Debug. All right, SQL text is null. Why? Because I didn't put anything in here. All right, I closed the form and reopened it. I didn't put any code in there. Again, rookie mistake. You'll make it too. So we'll just say right here, if is null S, uh, SQL text, then exit sub. All right, don't do anything. Now, convert. Oh, nothing's happening. Why? Because there's no code in there. All right, let's go back over here, grab this stuff, put it in there. Now let's see if it works. Go. Perfect. All right, select customer T dot star, close those quotes, ampersand underscore, open the next line of quotes. There is a VB tab in there, but you don't see it in the, in the text box. When you copy it, you will. Okay. Now we just have to add the opening quote there and the close quote there. That's easy to do. All right, come back over here. Here we'll say, once we've done that, we'll say S equals open quote and S and close quote. Like that. Save that. Convert. Boom. Okay. Let's blank this box too when it starts so it doesn't put it in there twice. All right. Right here, we'll say status box. That's the second box is blank. All right. Save it. Now when I run it, there. You just get one set. All right. Now this should copy over perfectly into here. Well, let's just go down here, test it for a second. Paste. All right. Yeah, it looks nice. See? You got the quote there. Close that quote. Your line continuation character, a tab in, and then that. All right. Want to put a command in front of it so that it doesn't look weird? All right. Maybe put right here, put the uh, me.recordSource equals or whatever. All right. Right here, put me.recordSource equals. Or you could put your do command.runsql there if you want to. All right, save it, hit convert. Now all you got to do is copy this guy, copy, come over here, all right, and then paste it in, and look at that. See that? Yeah, maybe tab this in one more. We could put two VB tabs here if you want to, all right? VB tab and VB tab. All right, you don't want that there, though. How about we even take another step and uh, copy it to the clipboard for the user? Make that easy, right? You're getting lucky, folks. These are these are tricks that I was saving for the extended cut. Usually I show all these extra little tricks for the members, but I'm giving you a bonus today since it's New Year's Eve. I'm feeling generous. There is going to be an extended cut with a lot more stuff in it, but I was saving this stuff for the extended cut. But let's do this. Let's say, um, since we've statused it, status box dot set focus. Let's move to the status box. Then do command dot run command. ACCMD copy that copies whatever is in the current field to the clipboard. All right, just saved you a step. All right, 
save it, come back over here, hit convert, boom, and this is now in the clipboard. Just to prove it, let me close this, open it back up again. Let me grab this. That, that should now be in the clipboard, okay? Paste it here, hit convert, boom. It goes here, copies that text. Now I should be able to come right back over here and just go paste, boom. See how easy that was? All right, one more thing I'm going to show you. And what this is what happens if you actually have criteria in here that has quotes in it. For example, save changes, yes. For example, whoops, in here, design view, let's say you want to see all this stuff, but you want to see it where the state is equal to New York. Okay, and I'm going to hide that so we don't have to see double state. All right, that's what that show button does. Run this. All right, I just see one person, but it's the person from New York. Now, the SQL has quotes in it right there. That throws a wrench in the, in the monkey works because if I copy that, let's make this our new guy. I'll put that in there. All right. Those quotes are going to cause a problem. So let's close this. Save changes. No. All right, let's go back into our main menu form. Now, if I paste this in there and hit convert, all right, look what happens. That's not quite right. So if I copy this and go over here now and paste it, look, it's not right. Because this basically closes that quote. So we have to just convert these guys over to double, double quotes when we uh, first process this line. So what we're going to do is we're going to say right here, all right, S equals replace S find any set of double quotes and replace them with quote, quote, close that up. I know, freaky, huh? We're going to change any of those into double, double quotes. That, that any, any double quotes that happen to already be in there. I know, it's crazy. All right, you ready? Let's test it now. Same stuff in here. Convert. All right, look at that. Looks good. That should be in our clipboard now. Let's come over here and paste and look at that it's valid it works want to learn more in the extended cut for members i show you a bunch of new tricks for example we'll learn how to break up long lines sometimes these select statement lines can be super long all right i'll show you how to chop that up and break it up into smaller pieces so when it converts it it looks like that then i'll show you how to load up a list box with all of the queries that are in your database so when you hit load query list or when this form opens, this will show all of the queries in your database. Then I'll show you how to click on one of these guys and the SQL from that query will immediately feed into this box. So you don't have to copy and paste anything. Just build the query, save it, and then load it into this form. Then I'll teach you how to analyze the text with the CHR and ASC functions. I'll just teach you how each character has its own ASCII code behind it. Lots of cool stuff in the extended cut. And remember, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, it's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like level one, level two is just $1, and that is free 
for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.